Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Care 24 here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War Vehicle Tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the T-64A. The T-64A is a Soviet second generation main battle tank introduced in the early 1960s. It was a more advanced counterpart to the T-62. The T-64 served in tank divisions while the T-62 supported infantry and motorized rifle divisions. It introduced a number of advanced features including composite armor, a compact engine, and a transmission and a smooth bore 125mm gun equipped with an autoloader to allow the crew to be reduced to 3 so the tank could be smaller and lighter. In spite of being armed and armored like a heavy tank, the T-64 only weighed 38 tons. These features made the T-34, or T-64 sorry, expensive to build, significantly more so than the previous generation of Soviet tanks. This was especially true of the power pack, which was time consuming to build and cost twice as much as most conventional designs. Several proposals were made to improve the T-64 of new engines, but chief designer Alexander Morozov's political power in Moscow kept the design in production in spite of any concerns about price. This led to the T-72 being designed as an emergency design, only to be produced in case of a war, but its 40% lower price led to it entering production in spite of Morozov's objections. At present, the T-64 is in use in very few nations or regions, but is currently undergoing significant factory overhauls and modernization in Ukraine. The newest, vastly upgraded and improved model of the 50-year-old design is the T-64BM Bulat, which has increased its weight to 45 tons and has seen active service in the field. So yeah, pretty interesting tank and again, a really broad his, uh, kind of service time. Uh, it's really interesting with these Soviet tanks and just how long they actually keep these guys in service. Uh, you know, with the T-64 still in service and T-72s and all that stuff. So it's just kind of crazy to see like how you know, good of a platform this tank really was to where it's still being used uh, in nations today. But yeah, really cool design for it. And as I mentioned, this is the T-64A. So this is a slightly different design here compared to the T T-64. I believe the one of the main changes is a different turret. Um, but yeah, um, pretty much cool stuff um, for it. And this also has a armor package on it, which is used to fight ATGMs and stuff like that with these little fins that pop off the side of the tank. Uh, basically designed to cause the ATGM or missile to uh, explode uh, on those panels rather than actually hitting the tank itself. So it kind of gives the tank a little bit more protection and kind of prematurely detonates any missiles that might be coming in at it. Uh, it's only really good at the front and, or at a slight angle, but other than that it's going to expose too much side for the missile to actually be pretty much or those the armor to be rendered uh, pretty much useless. Anyways, go ahead and take a look at this vehicle. Start off with we have the main gun here, the 125 millimeter gun, and we have obviously the turret here of all the details and stuff like that. The little extra things mounted onto the turret, storage boxes, equipment, all that kind of stuff, all of our way around. This version up here, we just have a spotlight here for the commander satch rather than putting in a uh, machine gun. So thought it would look a little bit better, and I do like it over the uh, machine gun. And we also have a light here on the back, so kind of two cool little things there. As we work our way back here further, we have all the d detail here over the engine deck. So, pretty cool design overall, and this right here is supposed to be like that. Um, but yeah, pretty cool designs overall for that in the back here. And the tracks here, we are working with a new design here using some banners uh, to actually kind of spruce up our road wheels a little bit. I think it kind of adds a good little flair to the uh, wheels and kind of makes them look a little bit more... Uh, I guess uh, evenly spaced out compared to using the two stairs back to back. So pretty cool stuff. I think it's a really nice tank and again going to be an awesome addition to any of your uh, modern or I would say probably more Cold War uh, scenarios with this type of tank. The variant we have in particular. But yeah, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first uh, layers. Layers 0 and 1. Alright guys, so going ahead and move into our first layer here. We'll be going ahead and start with layer 1. For layer 1 to go ahead and get started with here, we want to go ahead and place down a row of 2 of narrow brick slabs like this across, followed by a row of 2 of narrow brick top slabs, which are going to be coming off those 2 slabs just like that. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and take our black shulker boxes. We're going to place down a row of 2 of shulker boxes back to back like so. On the sides of the shulker boxes, we're going to place down an item frame of green terracotta block in the item frame. If you do have, uh, if you're on Java Edition, you can go ahead and also place a dark oak button on the side of this block as well, the shulker box here. Um, just note that if you're on bedrock uh, versions, you're not able to do that. So if that's the case, just use the item frame. We're going to go ahead and place down two polished black stone stairs back to back like so. Uh, two black shulker boxes on there, basically facing each other like that. Same thing here again on the side, item frame, green shulker box, and a dark oak button if we can. 
We're going to then place down there two polished black stone stairs, back to back like that on both sides. A, another row of <clears throat> two of black shulker boxes. On the side here, item frame, green terracotta blocking the item frame, and a dark oak with button. And one more time, we're going to place down a row of two of polished black stone stairs, and there are two right behind it. And we're going to go and follow this up by placing down two narrow brick slabs and two narrow brick top slabs like this across the back there. And this is basically what we want here for the side of our tracks. So we're going to come back to this here in a little bit, adding our banners, and we'll kind of see a more finalized look for that design. After we have that done, we want to go and then go to the back here. We're going to go to this narrow brick slab. We're going to go off of it with one, two, three dark oak with top slabs. And then we're going to place down one top slab here in the center, followed by a zombie head to both sides of the slab like so. Going to the front here, we want to go and go to with our top slabs back to this row here. We're going to place down a row of three across here. And we're going to place down two black shulker boxes back to back like so. Two narrow brick slabs and two narrow brick top slabs like so coming off right there. We then want to place down our item frame, green terracotta block, dark oak wood button, and basically the same thing we did on the air side. I'm going to go and do this a little bit faster as I've already kind of covered in detail how to do it. Um, if you need to, just refer to the air side as both sides of the tracks are completely the same. So, again, taking this back here, all the way like so, dark oak button, iron frame, green terracotta block, two polished black stone stairs, and we then want to go and place down our two narrow brick slabs and our two narrow brick top slabs. Now, once we have the left side of the tracks done, we're going to then go to the center here and fill the center space in with our dark oak top slabs. So, like this here to create the bottom here of the tank. With all done, um, we basically have the basic structure for our build done, and we're going to now move into making those banners. So I'm going to go and grab the materials, and I'll be back here in a sec to show you guys how to make those banners there for the road wheels. Alright guys, so we're going ahead and moving into making those banners. These banners are super simple to make. All we're going to need is two green banners and four black dye, and obviously, of course, a loom. We're going to go and go into our loom. We're going to place down our green banners in our loom and our black dye. We want to go and start off by going ahead and splitting in or splitting each one of these banners in half with this black line that goes across the center. And we're going to do this for both of our green banners. So we get two banners that look like this. We then want to place down our banner back into our loom here. And we're going to go and do a line basically that splits it in the center to the left side with black. So we get a banner that looks like this. And then our second banner, we're going to go and basically do the opposite. So we're going to go ahead and do a black line and split it in half on the right side. We can go and then take these banners and we're going to go and put them on the sides here of these stairs. And we want to make sure that the green portions of the banners are going to be facing toward each other like so for each one of our wheels. And we're just going to go and basically do this on each one of these sets of stairs. And as you'll see, you'll create a cool design here for our road wheels for the vehicle. I think it looks really nice and definitely kind of uh, looks more accurate and gives you a nice kind of spacing um, for the uh, the wheels and all that stuff. So we like the way this came out and uh, that will be done on obviously both sides for the tank there. And once you have that all complete, we'll go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer number two. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to take our narrow brick walls. We're going to place down our row two on top of those narrow brick top slabs. We then want to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood trap door on the outside here of those walls like that, followed by a row of two dark oak wood signs like that across. And we then want to go ahead and place down uh, basically the same thing over here on this side. So same thing on this side. And we can go and then swap out our narrow brick wall here for a zombie head. And we're going to place down a zombie head here on both uh, sides there, on the insides of those uh, narrow brick walls. Once we have that done, we're going to take our green terracotta and we're going to go to the inside wall. And we're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And uh, we're, going to go, we're going to go back 11 green terracotta blocks. And same thing over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now from our last block here, we're going to go and then place down a green shulker box out to both sides, an item frame on the side of that box, a cobweb in the item frame, same thing over here. And we then want to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood button on this side of the shulker box, like this, again to both sides. We're going to go then take our narrow brick, uh, or actually we're going to go to the front here, and we're going to go back from this narrow brick wall with a green terracotta block. After that, we want to go then take our narrow brick top slabs, we're going to place down a row of top slabs all the way along the side here between our blocks. And we're going to do the same thing over here as well. So just like this. Now at this point right here, we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves uh, item frames. We're going to place down an item frame on this narrow brick slab and basically every other slab going down the side here. Like so. So you should have basically five item frames, each with a space of one. And in those item frames, we're going to place down green terracotta blocks. Now again, if you are on Bedrock Edition, 
uh, you will not be able to place down Dark Liquid Signs over the item frames. But if you're on Java, go ahead and place down a Dark Liquid Sign over the item frame. Just kind of complete the look a little bit more for the, um, the kind of the guide wheels here for the tracks on the top there. So it'll be just like that. And over here on this side, we're going to go and do the same thing. So again, every other Nether Brick Slab here, we're going to place down an item frame. We're going to place our green Terracotta Blocks in those item frames and our signs over them like that. <clears throat> and once we have that done, on the back here, we're just going to then take our black concrete, place down a row of two across the sides here, and then a dark liquid sign on both sides like that. After that's done, um, across the back here, we're going to go and take our green terracotta. We're going to place down a green terracotta block on both sides here, a mossy stone brick wall there in the center, and we're going to then place down a row of three of green terracotta going forward from it. We also want to go ahead and build our unditching log, and for this we're just going to go and take spruce wood top slabs and place down a row of seven that goes across the entire backside here of the, the um, tank. And we want to go ahead and then go to the second to, um, to basically side uh, slabs here. So this slab here and this slab here, we're going to place down dark liquid signs on the sides of those slabs. After that, going ahead and going to the front of the tank, we want to go ahead and grab ourselves some snowballs and item frames. And we're going to place down a row of three of dark liquid slabs between these green terracotta blocks. And then we're going to place down an item frame on these slabs on the outsides here and snowballs in those item frames for the front headlights. With that complete, we're going to then place down a green terracotta block here to both sides behind that row and a spruce wood plank there in the center. And then from this point, we can go ahead and then just take our green terracotta and just fill the space in entirely here for the tank. Uh, you can choose to leave this open if you do want for interior purposes, but there really isn't much room in this tank for interior. So... We'll just go ahead and completely fill it in um, for the sake of the tutorial. Now also on the sides here we do have our uh, armor add-on, so we're going to go ahead and add that on. To build this armor, we're going to go, and go to this dark oak trapdoor, place a trapdoor coming off of it, and close it like so, or rather open it. We're going to go then place down a trapdoor that's going to be coming off this sign. Um, if you aren't able to place the signs due to being on bedrock, you may have to mess with blocks, but basically you want a trapdoor opened up um, against basically have a block right here so it's gonna be like that so you can place down the, tr the block place the trap door close it or open it or close it whatever you want to look at this and then you're gonna place down your item frame back um, that's one way you can do that um, then uh, we're gonna go, and go to this section here we're gonna have coming off this item frame and trap in a sign a trap door like so and we're also gonna place down a trap door that's gonna be coming off of this item frame slash sign and once you have that done that's gonna be pretty much your uh, trap doors there we're going to go and do the same thing over here. So just like this, again, I'm going to go a little bit faster since I already kind of covered how to go about doing this. But again, a pretty simple design, nothing too complex. And that right there will do it for that extra side armor. And with that, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number three. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three, to go ahead and get started here, we're going to place down green carpets on top of these narrow walls. And then going back from those, we're going to place down a row of two spruce wood trap doors to both sides. We then want to go and take our daylight detectors. We're going to place down a row of two of daylight detectors, like this behind the trap doors. And if your trap doors do open, which they should, we're going to go and make sure we close them back up. We then want to place down a dark oogoo button here to both sides on those green terracotta blocks. And we're going to then place down another row of two of daylight detectors here to both sides. The center uh, portion in here, we're going to place down a dark oogoo slab, spruce wood slab, and a dark oogoo slab. Coming off the spruce wood slab, we're going to place down an item frame with a black bed rotated on side like so, coming off the item frame. And if you're able to, on uh, Java, we're going to place down a spruce wood sign over the item frame like so. Once we have that done there, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves a stripped birch wood uh, block. We're going to place it down right here in the center, followed by a green terracotta block to both sides. And then a row or two of daylight detectors out to the sides. We then want to place down a row of five of green terracotta across, followed by a second row of five. And to the sides here, we're just going to place down two spruce wood trap doors on both sides. We're going to go then place down another row of five of green terracotta going across. And again, the same thing, a spruce wood trap door, or spruce wood slab to both sides. We're going to go then place down a row of three of green terracotta across the center here. Going to the sides, we're going to go and grab ourselves a mossy cobblestone wall, place it down to both sides here, and then a spruce wood slab to the sides of those walls. We then want to go and go to the side of this uh, spruce wood slab, and we're going to also place down a spruce wood sign, again, to both sides. After we have that done, we're going to then place down a green terracotta block here in the center, and a mossy cobblestone wall to both sides. We're going to then place down a dark oak wood slab to both ends, and then a spruce wood slab on the sides. And coming off the side of that spruce wood slab, we're going to place down a spruce wood sign. 
like so. Continuing on, we're going to then place down a spruce wood slab to both sides again. After we have that done, over here on the left side, we're going to place down a daylight detector going back. And we then want to go ahead and grab a dark oak wood trap door. You're going to place on a dark oak wood trap door after that daylight detector. Now, we then want to go and grab ourselves dark oak wood stairs. And we're going to place down a row of two of dark oak wood stairs here. And then another daylight detector going back. Coming off that daylight detector on top of our uh, spruce uh, wood top slab, we're going to place down a lever that's going to be facing toward the daylight detector like so. We then want to go ahead and grab our daylight detectors. We're going to place down a narrow row of two here. And we're going to change these to the night mode. And we're going to then place down a dark oak wood slab here on the end. After we have that done, we're going to then grab our narrow brick slabs. We're going to place down a row of two narrow brick slabs, a dark oak wood slab, row of two narrow brick slabs, dark oak wood slab like that. We're going to then place down a dark oak wood slab here. We're going to grab ourselves a zombie head, place a zombie head here, and an air daylight detector going back from it. Coming off this daylight detector, we're going to place down a zombie head like so. We then want to go ahead and place down another spruce wood uh, slab going back over here on the right side. And we're going to then place down a lever on top of this black concrete block, flick toward the um, daylight detector like so on the inside there. After that's all done, we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a item frame and a iron bar. We're going to place down a row of three of iron bars across those slabs. And then we're going to place down iron bars in those item frames just like that. And uh, with that done, that's going to do for the base uh, kind of design here for the tank. We're going to go now move into our kind of sorry armor. Now for this uh, armor here, we'll be using barrier blocks and signs. So um, go ahead and get yourself barrier blocks and signs and we'll be pretty much good to go. So for our first barrier block, we're going to place it down here on top of this trap door on both sides of the front here. And then we're going to place down a dark oak with sign on the side of the barrier block facing toward the rear of the tank. So just like that. Our next barrier blocks are going to be going ahead and going to the space in between these trap doors. So one, two, this space right here. And we're going to place down dark oak with signs on basically both sides of those uh, barrier blocks. So same thing right here. One, two, and dark oak with signs on both ends there. And that right there's all we need to do for our side armor. And that's really all we have here for layer number three for the build. And here's what it looks, it's looking like so far from up above. And with that, we'll go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number four. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to begin with, we're going to place a nice stripped spruce wood block on top of this one right here. And we're going to then place down a smooth sandstone slab going forward. To the side of the slab, we're going to place down a dark wood fence gate, open it up toward the front, place down an item frame coming off that fence gate, and we're going to then place down a red stained glass um, pane in that item frame like so. On the side of this sign as well, we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign. Coming off this smooth sandstone block here to the right side of it, we're going to place down a birch wood trap door. We then want to go ahead and grab our dark oak wood slabs and we're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, and 8 uh, dark oak wood slabs forward and then a narrow brick slab here on the very tip. We want to go ahead and count back to the third and fourth top slabs from last and we're going to go to the bottom here. We're going to place down dark oak wood trapdoors on the bottom of those two top slabs and then dark, dark oak wood signs here to the sides of them. Like so. After that's done, we want to go and then take our green terracotta and we're going to go ahead and place down a row of three behind this block here. We're going to go then grab our dark oak wood stairs and place down a dark oak wood stair to both sides of this birch wood or this uh, strip birch wood block. And we're going to then place down an item frame here coming off the stair. In that item frame, we're going to place down a black concrete block like so. After that, uh, we want to go and then continue on by placing down a row of three green terracotta across here, followed by a row of two of mossy cobblestone walls to both ends. We're going to go and then place down another row of three of green terracotta going across, this time with a dark oak stair to both ends. And then once we get to this uh, portion right here, we're going to place down a stripped spruce wood log, like so, in the left hand corner, a green terracotta block. And we're going to go ahead and then place down another green terracotta block like so. We're going to go and then take our zombie heads and place down a zombie head on the side of this spruce wood block here. And the side of this green terracotta block. Or actually, it's going to be on the side facing toward the rear here like so. So just like this. And on the very back here, we're just going to place down a dark oak stair. Now, uh, you can uh, go ahead and place down a zombie head here on this spruce wood log. And also the side of this green terracotta block to kind of 
wrap up the back there of the turret. But since we are going to be adding in some cargo and extra bits like that mounted onto the turret, we're going to leave those spaces open. So now to go ahead and add the stuff onto the turret, we're going to go ahead and place down two zombie heads here on the side of those walls. We're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a sandstone wall and a stripped birch wood log. We're going to place down a stripped birch wood log like so and a sandstone wall. Coming off this uh, zombie head here, we're going to place down an air sandstone wall and an air stripped birch wood log on the side. We then uh, want to go ahead and place down a row of two of dark oak top slabs like this, and then we're going to place down two dark oak signs coming off those slabs like so. Once we have that all done there, we're going to go and grab polished andesite. We're going to place down polished andesite top slab, a skeleton skull to the side of that top slab, and then one skeleton skull going forward like so. And then uh, after that, we're going to go then take a sandstone top slab. We're going to place down a sandstone top slab here on the side. And we're going to then wrap our birchwood signs around the side of the slab. Like that. And then uh, after we have that done, we're going to grab a dark oak wood stair, a sign, and a zombie head. We're going to place down a dark oak wood sign or stair on the side of this green terracotta block, a sign on the block, and then a zombie head coming off the front of the stair going forward. And then we're going to place down another dark oak wood upside down stair coming off this stair, a dark oak wood sign coming off the face there of the stair. And we then want to go and just place down a end rod going forward. And then a zombie head like that coming off the um, mossy cobblestone wall. And that right there is going to basically complete what we have here for layer 4. As you can see, we basically have started with a turret going on here. A lot of stuff going on because there are a lot of little detail bits and stuff like that we're trying to fit on the turret. But that right there is going to do it for layer 4. And with that, we're going to move into our layer, final layers here. Layers 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We're going to basically put all the top details on top of the turret and pretty much complete the build. So with that, let's move into layers 5 through 9. Alright guys, going ahead and moving into our final layers here. To go ahead and get started with, we're going to place down a dark oak trapdoor on top of this green terracotta block here. Going uh, to the side from that, we're going to place down a flower pot to the left side, and then we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence post on top of this green terracotta block. We're going to go ahead and place down a end rod that goes up from the fence post, and we then want to go ahead and place down a row of three of iron bars that go up from the end rod, so one, two, and three up. To the right side here, we're going to place down a dark oak wood pressure plate. Then over here on the other side, we're going to place down an iron frame and a green terracotta block in the iron frame. Continuing back from the fence post, we're going to place down two daylight detectors back. We're going to go then place down a redstone comparator on the left side here. And we're going to go then place down a stone button on top of this spruce uh, stripped log. And then we're going to grab a zombie head and place it down on this dark oak wood stair, facing forward like so. Over here to the right side, we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate on top of this green terracotta block. We're going to have this opened up toward the rear here. On top of it, we're going to place down a dark oak wood trap door, an item frame coming off the trap door, a red stained glass block in the item frame, and then a dark oak wood sign on the side of the uh, trap door like that. And we then want to go ahead and place down a spruce wood slab here after that fence gate. We then want to go into the sides here on top of these two stairs here and place down item frames and then in those item frames we're going to place down green stained glass panes. So one, two. And then after we have that done on the back here, we're going to go ahead and place down a row two of end rods. So one, two right here. We're going to place down a dark oak trap door on the center one. We're going to then grab an item frame. We're going to place down an item frame on the side of the trapdoor and a snowball facing toward the rear here and then taking our green carpet we're just going to place down a row two of green carpet on top of those dark oak with top slabs and with that all complete there that is going to complete my design here for the t64a hope you guys do enjoy this design and are able to put it to good use if you do want to use this build i do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it this can be anything, can be anything from a silent build to my channel or this video if this does appear on any social media sites as long as you guys give me proper credit for it you're free to for our projects you guys are working on um, overall, enjoy the build, have fun fit, and all that fun stuff. But other than that, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary2 before, and I'll see you guys next time.